What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneakers Podcast. As always, I am with my guy, Mr. Matt Welty. We're here. A little delayed. <laughs> and to my left, Mr. <laughs> Brendan Dunn. Here I am, fresh off the jet. Actually, maybe not fresh. I, I feel a little, a little ragged, a little haggard. You've had a yeah, rough travel was, experience again, tough. right? Let me just say it off top. Actually, how far into this are we? Because I know sometimes... Uh, on YouTube, it's not good to curse in the first like 30 seconds of the yes. program. Oh, we're 30 seconds in, so I can say, fuck JetBlue as Whoa. a staff, as a record label, and as a motherfucking crew. Uh, wow. I know that that's your main airline of choice, is that right? It was, and it was. I switched to Delta, but I felt, okay, welcome aboard. I, I, I switched to Delta, but I did fly JetBlue this weekend. But you flew your experience. I eventually got to fly. Enlighten us. You okay. really came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, do you guys know about bird strikes? Yeah. Yes. We talked about it the other day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> talked about it somewhere else, not here for the audit. Yes. Yes. Did you? Okay. Did you know about bird strikes before I mentioned bird yes. strikes? I knew because of yes. what um, our colleague said about Sully. <laughs> Is that what happened when yes. Sully had to, to land the plane? Yeah. I never yeah. saw the movie. Have you guys ever suffered I, a bird I didn't strike see the delay? Movie, but we worked at a news organization while that <laughs> I was mean, happening. Yeah, it, ha it, it literally <laughs> it happened. happened. At were you there? Were you? No, at I was. So when that happened, I remember I was driving. I was going to school in New Jersey, and so I was like coming to visit my parents, and I drove back through the city or whatever on the way home, and. I was driving through yes. New York when that happened in traffic. So was... when Sully landed the plane, it was because birds had struck the plane yeah. and, and yeah. veered it off course. Okay, yeah. well, we needed him. When did that happen? When did Sully land the plane? I'm looking. He's got his own Wikipedia page. Like 2011, page? maybe? What year was it? Okay, is that right? I think so. Flight, four, fifth, flight 1549. Okay, 2009. I wasn't in New York. I, I have a okay. big excuse not to okay. know that much about it. It was a big thing. There was like, <laughs> yeah, people just documenting it from their office well, buildings. Well, like, it was a big thing in my life because yeah. my plane coming back from Portland to New York, they made us wait two hours before they decided that we couldn't take off because of the bird strikes. And then I had to wait in line for another hour and 40 minutes just to get some something get sorted out somehow then they automatically rebooked me i was going to see if i could take another flight back eventually i just took the hotel and chilled at the hampton by the pdx airport so when you stay at the hotel near the airport is it like just a shuttle is it really convenient i sometimes when i take early flights i think about doing that what what, what is your i mean recommendation I was, for that i was not in a good mood so it didn't feel like a good thing i mean the the shuttle was easy enough but you don't want to be stuck at the fucking hampton inn Hotel, yeah, <laughs> the hotel airport. <sighs> so, are we done with JetBlue for a while? Me, what do you yes. Think? Is JetBlue but the, canceled. But you <laughs> put went. Put it out there. <laughs> you went to put Port it in the air, unlike the fucking plane. <laughs> you went to Portland, and the there's not many planes from New York, so yeah, there's not many not, options. Not too many regular flights. Yeah. I this you past week, Air Alaska or whatever. <laughs> oh, we did a we did a little bit of Alaska growing up. Yeah. Or, what is it, Southwest? The airport near Bayshore, which I never really take because I'm not there, but Southwest is like the main thing. It's like 15 minutes from, from Bayshore. It's oh, an right. Islip MacArthur Airport. I oh, flew JetBlue yeah. this weekend as well. I was in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Has anyone ever been? Uh, no. Okay. I spent the summer in Charleston once. Okay. I'm not that good at geography, but South Carolina, Charleston, <laughs> South Carolina, yes. I flew JetBlue. Yeah. On the way back, my... TV was the only one that was out. So listen, and were, were, you shoot, were you shooting something down there? No, wasn't shooting anything. It was, um, it was actually like a catch up with some friends. But bachelor party? Uh, yes, yes, it was. Shouts to my friend Brad and the whole crew down there. Uh, so my TV was the only one out, and get this, I thought my charger, the ch yeah, the. Yeah. External charger was fully charged. It was dead, and Terrible my phone feeling. was dead on the Ooh. flight. You brought the screen time down then. Brought the screen. Right? You brought the average down. No. Joe's still on his phone, like, <laughs> panicking, going through, like, his apps. Let me tell you, I checked, I, checked the, I checked the external charger. I was like, there's no way. It must. And then, you know, you flip the cord around, and then mm -hmm, you're like, mm -hmm. the, the iPhone charger around. But so they reset the TVs. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we'll reset the TV. I was like, you know, my TV's out. And they're like, oh, we'll do a reset, which they always do. My TV is the only one that doesn't come on. I barter with the flight attendant. I was yeah. like, hey. Oh, also the plane, to, because South Carolina is such a quick stop, quick um, trip, yeah, yeah. they don't have, they don't have uh, outlets yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I bartered with the flight attendant. I said, because my TV's out, can you charge my phone for 20 minutes? And <laughs> the guy took out his laptop in the back of the plane. He was like, there's no outlets on this plane. The, the voltage or whatever, he charged yeah. my phone on the laptop. I got what 20 minutes. Hero. 20 minutes of juice. So listen, do we? Does that, even out? <laughs> does that even out from your experience? <laughs> Shouts to Blake. Should we say his name, the flight attendant? Yeah, Shout yeah, out. yeah. Shouts to Blake. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to give, get, his, get his flowers. So look, look it. Kind of evens out. No, well, okay. I'm, still, I'm still not trying. Welty, what have you been up to? I feel like we've been talking about ourselves nonstop. Yeah, just, we, 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 and we've been away for a while, so the people need to know what's been going on in our I lives. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in three months. Welty, uh, weekend was, or even the past couple of weekends, because again, we've been away. Uh, we know you got something. What do you mean? I mean, what do you mean? Oh, I <laughs> no, I, I, thought, I thought you were alluding oh, no. to. <laughs> what oh, something? I do, I, I do have a funny follow up story for Hell you yeah. guys that I um, so. Um, over the weekend, a good friend of mine, Vahe, was in town from L.A. Mm -hmm. um, so they, like, corral the whole, like, Armenian crew and yeah. go out for kebab. Was that the Sunday night? At Sunday night, yes. I saw the zoom in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, on, on our, so we went to Ravash, the kebab place where me and Brendan had the infamous dinner where our friend PG had his credit card declined. Okay, can I just cut in real yeah. quick? I'm not. This isn't an interruption. Did anyone see PG post the Kith BMW for sale? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I did. PG <laughs> posted the Kith BMW for sale oh with the God. price. Oh, my God, yeah. He flipped was that cars backdoored now. out the lot? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was Saturday, and I'm like, no way. No way. And imagine I'm like, imagine no, this, you're a reseller, and you get the, stuck what is the holding price on that I think it was like, I, I think it's $100,000, right? I thought I saw on PG's. 135,000. Oh. I'm like, wait a minute. What am I looking at? And <laughs> That's big boy inventory. Yeah. Um, Sorry, so, go ahead. So we go there, and um, you know, there's like 10 people, and uh, we have our big dinner, whatever. And uh, Did it take as long to order as it did when you and I it were? It actually took... It took even longer because we were a huge table mm -hmm. and like they had to connect the tables. We had made reservations and they're like, "What's a reservation?" When by the time we get there, mm -hmm. um, there was like a table of like a guy and a husband and wife and like their daughter or whatever, mm -hmm. like who had already finished dinner and just wanted to sit there for thirty five minutes and drink a cup of tea. When they're that like, "That sounds amazing." <laughs> No, because we're waiting oh. for waiting for them to leave so they could put like our table together, yeah. and they were just like, "No, we're just gonna sit here for another forty five minutes." You're yeah. just over the table, and there's working. some surly fellas in that crew. I feel yeah. like you guys were probably. Uh, uh, anyways, so I was like, um, obviously, because Paul got his credit card declined for thirty seven dollars last time. Heard about this? Yeah. Last time we went to dinner, we go to pay. You know the whole situation, and of I course. and my friend Vahe had brought a gift, and it was a it was a hashkar. It's like a it's like an Armenian cross and a stone. It's like a cultural symbol or whatever. And I was like, Paul, do I need to put this on the table so you could say a prayer on it before you oh. <laughs> before you before you swipe your credit card? It'd be and, your own people. <laughs> and he goes. I brought cash this time. Ooh, wow. <laughs> reverse. Did okay. It, I don't. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but yeah, he was. Don't let the necessary occur, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So but, I'm glad we had that follow up. See, these are the important anecdotes that we need. One's about uh, Paul Givalekian's credit score. Or can we say his full name? Yes. Okay. PG. PG. Recurring character. In, in the lore of this show, but somebody who will never come on the show, right? Well, yeah, people oh, always ask him great. to come on the show, and he doesn't want to come on the show. Okay, I think he says for what? He goes for what? That's his answer. <laughs> what am I going to talk about? For what? No, I think we. Paul can... has so many stories. I think eventually we can we get can him on the him? show. I, I think don't he's know. a little. I think he's a little camera shy when it comes a... to interviews okay. and. We were all camera shy. Have you seen some of the past episodes of Sneaker Shopping <laughs> from 26, 2015? Oh, my we'll God. work on it. PG. Yeah, but, but just so people know, like, it's not us holding back. We want to have PG on here to tell his amazing stories about sneakers and about his life, but it's tough to convince him. Yeah. Should we talk about the footwear we have on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you go first. I want to hear. Uh, I think I wore these on. Um, I don't know if I even wore these on this. I didn't. I didn't wear them here yet. Okay. These are the infamous forty-three Einhorn oh, Adidas ZX. The, yeah, 10, I know. These are the, shoes. These are the yeah. shoes that came that had to go through customs. Oh, okay. Yeah, you these had are to do a lot to get them. Yeah. You finally, put the social security number. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone. Someone else. It was did. so funny that you were like, "I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that." 
my off-white dunks got stuck in customs. I was like, you could have the social security <laughs> number, the taxpayer ID. My mother's maiden exactly. name. Exactly. You want you're the, my, the you're going to want 23 and me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Spit it in the tube for the DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what I need to. Yeah. Man, you worked so hard to get those, Welty. Yeah. Look good though. Joe. I so woke up this morning. And check the forecast. Hopped about the bed. Yeah, it was supposed to rain. You got your swag on. It's supposed to rain all day. Chops actually FaceTimed me at nine o'clock this morning and was like, "Oh, there's like a." I was like, "What's going on, man?" I was like, "What? What's up?" And he was like, "Oh, nothing." I was, oh. yeah. I was like, "Okay, yeah. what?" No, because you just you keep. Going no, I was out. like, yeah. "Everything all right?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Oh, it's like a nor'easter today." I was like, "Oh, I haven't been outside, let alone haven't woke up yet." But uh. <laughs> I look outside and then I check the forecast. It's supposed to rain all day. Dude, it was bad. I was ner sorry, quick yeah. interruption. I was nervous about my flight coming back because I got a weather warning from Optimum. Yeah. So even I thought JetBlue was yeah. gonna <laughs> Dude, drop I woke the up in again. the middle of the night because I had left like the window open. Like the screen was down, but the window was open. And it was raining so hard that I thought like I woke up in the middle of my sleep because I thought I had like left like the sink on and it was like the sound of like water pouring in on I love that. See, he's already in superintendent mode <laughs> because, like, yeah, he, the, the, if anything goes wrong with the building, you already have the, the anxiety <laughs> hit. I like startled up and ran. And yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So check the forecast. It said like all day into the night. So I came prepared. Mm -hmm. Nike ACG Mountain, the Haven exclusives. This is a low, right? Mountain it's a low. low. Yeah. Then. I get to Times Square, no rain. It didn't rain. Yeah. The rain's done. <laughs> so <laughs> over prepared. Over prepared. Yeah. Nothing wrong I, with didn't that. want to get caught slipping. I so. like that shoe a lot. That's you, you bought those on Haven? I own DSDs, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the lugs on the asshole. Um, I went during the pandemic, remember I went on like this ACG yeah. Yeah. kick. A C G spree. Yeah. When you were stuck inside, yeah. you were preparing <laughs> for the great outdoors. <laughs> Silly, yeah. exactly. I am wearing simple <laughs> sneakers today, and I, I figure Wealthy would be mad about these. Why? Mad about There's it. a look on his face like he's disappointed. And this honestly takes me back to, remember when Wealthy used to do the Kicks in the Office yeah. weekly series on Complex.com mm -hmm. where yes. he and Andy Herr would walk around yes. and document the shoes everyone was wearing? Wealthy would always get frustrated if... if Myself or other people who were into sneakers weren't wearing shoes that he felt were up to snuff. Oh, really? No, because Brendan would always like have some like something super fire or, or <laughs> you have a lot of shoes. Right. Thank right? you. And I think at that time too, it was like known that like we sh we'd shoot it on like Thursday or something oh, okay. like that. So for the most part, there were a lot of people in the office who kind of like got excited about it. Or to they would like wait till Thursday to wear a certain pair of shoes. Yeah. And then I'd come over to Brendan and he's like. Yeah, I'm wearing these beach shoes that I wore last week. I'm like, dude, you're like one of the few people that I can actually like doc so, document. You would go around. Where, what are you yeah, just walking? Like, yeah, shit on people like, you, this is what you. No, it wasn't that intense, but yeah, he was visibly disappointed yeah. quite frequently. Yeah, and I, it feels like he's disappointed here, but no, no, maybe no. he can correct me. I'm wearing no. simple sneakers. No. My man Kyle set me up with them. This is the Larry David exclusive is it uh, signature no not i mean i mean <laughs> but that's perfect the signature timing shoe, curb right? your enthusiasm's back yeah but i feel like a little bit like a poser wearing them because i really am not that big of a curb fan not that i don't like the show i just haven't watched it very much mm -hmm. so yeah i came back this weekend simple shoes i would say during like that airwalk era yeah uh -huh. in my must have been middle school they had such a moment like really all the, all the cool kids wearing them yeah like all the like cool 95 sort of yeah shoe. all the really? cool kids were wearing simple shoes I and think, like they had to run for a, a year or two i think the interesting part about that shoe is that like it actually was like a like a real skate shoe back mm -hmm. in the 90s but mm -hmm. at this point that line has gotten so like a race that it's just like made to be kind of like this old man like Casual type shoe, dad sort of shoe that because yeah. of the Larry David connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, maybe you guys are more familiar with these because you're a little bit older than me. But I never really saw this shoe growing up that much. So to me, it's always big like just CCS been catalog. Yeah, sort of. really. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Definitely had a moment. Okay, well, to me, it's just a Larry David shoe. So that's what which it is. is you got another pair of shoes. I did have another pair of shoes to to. Are we just we're just flexing just to flex. Well. Let's talk about the text message <laughs> this what, morning. What is the text message? This so morning? this, so he, uh, in our Slack, we were talking about um, Solomon sneakers yeah, yeah. a couple weeks back, and I was like, you know, I really, I want to try like my first pair. Yeah. And the multicolored, I was like, 
you know, pretty yeah. predictable that maybe the my first pair would be the multicolor ones. But mm -hmm. and then I think you were like, oh, Larry June wore them on FSR. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to order a pair. And you were like, I, I think we could get them. You guys yeah. both got laced, right? I think I got a pair in the mail, but I bought a pair before. Like I bought a pair about six months ago, maybe a yeah. year ago. I remember you were you said you had them and you were like on the fence about them, yeah, and then yeah. you started to wear them. Yeah, yeah, only recently did I start to really wear them. But they hit you back up, I think, since. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my colleague to my right is like, "Hey, don't, don't. I think um I might be able to get you a pair." So I was like, "Oh, amazing!" And then that was like three weeks ago, and then I'm like waiting, and then I think a uh, you know. The shoes, the shoes were, the shoes that Joe had wanted were out of stock. Okay, <laughs> which usually means they're like done, they're done. like yeah. you're not gonna be able to get them. But they said until they come back into the warehouse, they were, they were or, stuck on the yeah. on the port or out on the of West inventory Coast. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But they're back in inventory, so so then you, chain issues. he sent me a picture a couple of days ago. I was like, oh, nice. And um, I know we were recording today, and so this morning when we're all we were texting this morning. I was like, um, I think it would be funny to actually put a screenshot. Uh, yeah. I was like, uh, hey, Wealthy, can you bring my shoes? And he just wrote no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, didn't even, I didn't even question it. I was like, I, do you think well, I was really just going to be like, no, uh, I'm not going to bring them? I mean, listen, I don't know. So, I don't know what if, if, if the workout didn't go well this morning, I, I don't know. Joe, if I couldn't bring your shoes because there was like some sort of like, hey, I'm already here. The Nor'easter. The Nor'easter, though. So I was like, all right. From there, I would explain to you like, hey, like I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to swing by my house this morning or something like that. Yeah. You know, I thought like I don't know. I thought okay, maybe... but he, he did he did deliver right. You have the Solomons here. You want to show them off? Yeah, real quick. Yeah. Did, have job. you worn them yet? Chill the Puma. I just got them ten minutes ago. Oh right, right, right. Excuse me. <laughs> I like almost I have you, a Sunder Max Five to him. <laughs> right? please, please, what, please forgive me for that. What's one. the fit? What's the fit? I don't know. You got? You're gonna go all black? Or are you gonna like try and match one of the colors? Or maybe a hoodie and shorts with like the high socks. Wealthy, just... how much have you worn your Solomon so far? I'm. I have wow, a light. So I'm sure you're the same way where it's like you, you get a new pair of shoes yeah. and we have to kind of wear new shoes for a full size run yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So I don't like to wear my shoes until I wear them on the show. Oh, interesting. You don't do that? Um, no, I don't have you that rule for myself. You don't do myself. that, Joe? Like the first wear the has to if be I have on a pair a show. Of new, like if I have, because I have like, I don't know how many pairs of like eight, nine pairs of shoes that I haven't worn yet. Yeah. But I'm not going to wear them until I. Okay. Because I feel enough. like I'm going to get in the habit of wearing that shoe, and then yeah. it's going to be a little cooked by the time I need to wear something for an episode. Yeah, I, I've I really come around to them. I was a little worried because I had tried them on I think a few years back, and the midsole felt stiff to me. But I actually wore them while I was in Oregon for the past week, which we can get into in more detail, and you know have lots to share from that. But Definitely. that was my shoe that I brought on vacation. Well, not even a vacation. I was. I was working, but you're very cinematic in your IG stories when you travel abroad. Even like you know <laughs> that you did. I think that's the sneaker you were walking. Yeah, yeah. You you're like a, a young Spielberg with the <laughs> IG stories and the. And I the aim for Lynchian, yeah. but I did. And the zoom in is always so <laughs> precise. Anyways, I, I wore Solomon the whole time I was in Oregon the past weekend. Uh, it's more comfortable than I'd realized. Did you wear Solomon to the Nike campus? I did. You did? Wow. I did. <laughs> Can we talk about his IG caption? Yeah, and also, uh, thank you, by the way. Thank I'm, you I'm for sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, 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 no thank you for me. the shoes. Wait, the IG caption was, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, at yeah. Nike I'm campus, looking for like I'm champagne looking for, pop, yeah. poppy. You want to talk or something like that? Okay, <laughs> the, let me let's let's pull the curtain back a little bit because I really think about the IG captions, and I, you know, maybe I'll have a brainstorming session with somebody else. So there's a photo okay. of me on the Nike campus. Who, who, who's in your brainstorming sessions? Uh, Zach DeBasic a lot. Really? Yeah, Soul Collector Managing Editor Zach okay. DeBasic. So I had a much more cheeky caption planned for that photo of me at the Nike World Headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon. And um, Zach and I decided together that it was not a good idea and that some people who work at the company... You were going to be spicy, right? You were yeah. going to be spicy? <laughs> what, what is it? Okay, this and this is totally a joke and we'll put it out there. And, you know... It would it would rile up some conspiracies, Russell some, some jimmies, as you would say. Uh, yeah, some some unfounded conspiracies. But I was going to put still in the meeting. That's not bad, because <laughs> you could have been in a meeting. R right, like an oh. internal meeting. Oh, it, it, yeah, yeah. Right. internal Anyways. meeting, or you, some, you somehow getting reprimanded by the HR department of a company you don't even work for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was no wanted spicy. posters on campus <laughs> when you. Oh, here's the funny thing: I went to the Nike campus. And as I recall, years ago, 
pre-COVID, you could just kind of pull up and walk around okay. and nobody would really bother you. And uh, let me know if I have this wrong. But lately when you go, and I mentioned this, I think when I was there last summer, there's like a security guard and they kind of, they won't let you in. So I actually got turned away at, at Nike's world headquarters. The security guard would not let, um, would not let us onto the grounds. So how... So we turned around and we went to the next entrance and okay. <laughs> drove right in. So the security is you maybe the... maybe a little lacking, but yeah, we we hopped out. Go to the employee store? No, didn't do the employee store this time. I was I was there for Hood to Coast and I was there like a month ago. But saw yeah. you had a very important meeting with friend of the podcast, Frank yes. Cook. Yeah, Frank. Yeah, I had. A, I, you know what? I love being in Portland because Frank. Frank. Cook. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were talking. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Because we I have to leave this in. No. So it's no. We'll cut this I thought you were talking about Stephen Smith. That's why. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Sorry. I didn't see. Wait. Did did you post you and Frank? I don't know if I post. I think Frank Cook IG posted story it. on his IG story. I missed it. Apologies. Yeah, so, I thought you were talking about Stephen Smith. but Yeah, who I also. I mean, this is why this I love. This guy made his round. This is why I love going to Portland and, I, you know. I, I'm trying Frank. to see as many people as possible while I'm out there. So, you know, people that we know and love in the industry, in addition mm -hmm. to friends and family, people I went to college with. So, yeah, I was, I was keeping did, myself did incredibly booked. Did you get to see booked. Stephen Smith's archives? Um, I did not. I we went to his house briefly, and um, nice. We were rolling around in his Porsche, which was which was a special feeling. Okay, uh, did you, you know. drive it? He did not let me drive the Porsche, for, I think, for pretty obvious reasons. But, yeah, that was, that was – you know what? All my – all the vehicles I was riding around in Portland. So Frank Frank Cook has this Benz. That, that, Ooh, yeah, all right. Pretty slick. And then I don't know if you guys know Bima Williams. He, mm -hmm. he does a podcast, Claim it, a Story. Does he drive a He drives this, this, like, expedition Jeep with his logo on the side, and it's, like – uh, alternate side driving, and you have to like climb up into okay. it. So Does yeah, it have that, no no doors on it or something. No, there are doors, but yeah, that that was a good time. Yeah, uh, like I said, we I could just go for forty minutes recapping my vacation if people. Give, we'll, we'll, we'll go in and out. Okay, we'll go in. Oh, you know what? Another another Porsche person I have to mention is Steve Pelletier. Steve Pelly, formerly of Nike SB. Yeah, I swung by his place, and he was showing me a lot of the samples, dunks, and stuff that he's worked on over the years. Really? He's no longer at Nike after the reorg last year, but he, he has some pictures? crazy stuff. I didn't want to take pictures of the stuff he was showing me because you know, sometimes if you work at a sneaker company for a long time and you've kept this stuff secret or didn't show it to the public, like you know, I feel like I should let those people show it to the public and it's not cool to just be taking pictures but he had like he worked on the skunk dunks that was one of the first okay. sbs that he worked on it so we had a like three or four different samples of that I, I hadn't seen this before but one of them had a hole drilled in the sole i guess the factories will do that sometimes for samples to make sure nobody's like stealing them and oh, selling them or wearing them um yes he has some air force ones i'd never seen before so shout out to steve as well shout out to pelly a uh, good guy and uh long deep nike sb catalog awesome while we're on the nike sb topic should we um get Could, to our giveaway we should for the week and it's a really good giveaway you see the smile on my face yes before i crack the box open psa like we always do at this time Let to enter know. to win a free pair of sneakers from the complex sneakers podcast you can go to ebay.complex.com you can submit a question to ask us that we will answer live on the air if we pick your question if we answer your question here on the show we're going to send you a free pair of sneakers that we picked out that we hand selected in collaboration with the good folks at eBay. They are authenticity guarantee. And this week, do you know what this is, Walty? Yes. It's it's tied to everything you just spoke about. Yeah, very much. Very appropriate. Ooh. Taking it back to the 503. Taking it back to the 541. Does, does the buck stop here? Ooh. Nike SB Dunk Low Buck. Phil Knight tribute. Ducks colors. Look at that. Look at it. Look at that. You're going to be front row at the games next season? Hey, man. Hey, man. If we make it to the college football, look, I'll put it out there right now. Put it out there. Because I've been I've been wanting to stack up more Oregon-related gear that isn't too obvious to wear to big games. But this one? this one, Is this one too obvious? No. Okay. Because no one else is going to be wearing it. Exactly. So if and when Oregon makes it to the postseason, to the college football playoffs, you will see me at a game, if not multiple games, wearing this, the Nike SB Dunk Low Buck. Inspired by so good. Phil Knight, yeah, yes, and his nickname, Buck on the back. Were you a, were you a fan of a uh, Big Buck Hunter? 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know Brendan Dunn I throws down in the arcade, but I don't know if you were uh, um, no, bucking some shots. It's like a little bit of like a casuals game. You know what I mean? Like people who aren't really into the gaming. You know what I mean? You could catch me on like the SNK machine or something else. Big Buck Hunter. Not. Are you? Did you play it a lot? No, I, I mean I played it a couple times, but it's not. Yeah. yeah the, how about bass, the golfing ones? Big Bass Pro Shops <laughs> T-shirt on. I was not good at that game. <laughs> okay. 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 So we're giving these away to Matthew Ward, I think, from Wilming, Delaware. Who asked us a question? We picked Matthew's question. Matthew, you are getting a pair of these eBay authenticity guarantee. Matthew's question was wait a minute, Wilmington, Delaware. Do we know if Dave Matthews' family is from there at all? Does Dave Matthews have a cousin or uncle Anybody? that's from there? Not Can even we from Wilmington, but anywhere near Wilmington? He's saying he's okay, he's he motioning to us off the camera. No. Okay. Not. So we, that would be important to include if so. Um, Matthew Ward asked, What was one pair of shoes you begged your parents for? I remember one specifically. Okay. <sighs> Growing the up. Air Max Penny. 1996 the olympics one yeah i wanted it so bad penny hardaway was like my favorite player at the time yeah and i just wanted like i, I always used to try to get like one good pair mm -hmm. uh a year but i think that's when i started playing basketball mm -hmm. okay so you so, wanted them to actually play basketball yeah right? and i was gonna play basketball in them but the funny thing is i don't know if you guys remember this i hope you do so i remember i must have got like a good report card or something that year and they're like yeah you could you know that that you could get um Pick out a pair of shoes. And I was like, I want the Air Max Penny. So, so let me ask you this. When your report card comes in and you get to pick out a pair of shoes, are there budgetary concerns? Like, do they tell you you have to stay in a certain range, or are you, are you just going crazy? I mean, the, it wasn't like a flight club, you know? It was yeah, retail, right. retail. Back then, yeah. Back, but, it, you know, I guess expensive. Things were expensive, yeah. but yeah. But the thing that was funny about this story, they got me the sneakers, but they also, the light blue Orlando Magic Penny jersey, right? Yes. But here's the thing. Do you guys remember that a youth XL? Oh, they came with the small letters on it. The s <laughs> no, I don't know about that. I have the same thank story. You, dude, I have the same story. Dude, dude thank you for this. remembering no, this. this. Maybe, okay, so maybe the, the, the print, thing on, it, I can the print on it to. wasn't full. The, it wasn't, print the letters were like this small, like in the middle of it. So like, or the numbers, sorry. Done. I had, yes. a Char I had a Charles Barkley jersey no, like in 1994. Did you get made fun of for it? Yeah, I got made... it, look, it looks weird. <laughs> yeah, so listen. They got me the shoes, and yeah. then they were like, the we'll, get you, jersey. we'll get you the matching jersey. But the Youth XL was cheaper than the adult adult small. But the numbers... <laughs> like this big. Are, <laughs> and the last name and the numbers <laughs> were so small. So I, I was like... Whatever, I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't a big deal to you when you saw it. No, but at you practice, were, were, I got roasted. I yeah. got roasted. You could tell that it was like the youth one, and I'm so glad you remember. No, it, I had the same thing. I had a Charles Barkley Suns jersey, looks, the white, the white one, and yes. I was. It was just like it just looked funny. How I old never you at the time. I never got. I never got uh, vindicated until like it was like two years later, where my mom took me to a Champion outlet. Because like that's when champions still made all of the the jerseys. The jerseys, yeah. so they had like a bunch of players on sale and taking it back to the Pacific Northwest. I ended up oh, getting. Oh yeah. I ended, up, I ended up no. I ended up getting a Detlef Schrempf, uh Seattle SuperSonics jersey. Okay. Oh wow, good one. <laughs> now yeah. let me say this: this is I I don't have that same experience, but this is somewhat relatable because the only jersey I ever owned growing up because I wasn't a sports person but my father moved to Florida briefly and I had an Orlando Magic jersey like okay. I think a Shaq jersey like right with the, the black yeah, the, yeah black and black blue. with the with the silver like yeah. wizard type ball with the magic stuff flying yeah anyways sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. so happy you remember it it was disproportionately <laughs> yes <looked> very weird <laughs> I you're like to, I gotta see this and I'll, like, I'm gonna look up a photo I go like the full fit I get like the full fit and I'm like feeling and then Someone definitely called me out. I was like, "Oh, you got the Youth XL, didn't you?" And the and the the jersey, the numbers are are and the last name is I got, off. I got we're getting roasted um, because we had gone to like Olympia Sports or something like that when I was a kid, and like they always had like the rack of the jerseys that are like ten dollars or whatever, where it's like okay. traded Clearing players stuff, or yeah. something like that. And they had a Chris Webber Bullets jersey, and I was, like, so hyped to get it. And I think he changed his number from two to four or from four to two, one of the same. And I wore it to school, and, like, it wasn't his number. And some kid came up to me and was like, oh, you know he's number four, right? And, like, were they saying you had a fake jersey or just basically, you had the wrong? Basically, I didn't find out until, like, years later when I finally, like, looked it up through the advent of, like, Wikipedia. Yeah, that, like, yeah. I actually had the real thing. It was just the previous seasons. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you didn't show up with the fake jersey. We are we are in such a rabbit hole, but I feel like we're gonna get into a lot of rabbit holes this yes. week. Yeah. Oh, uh, 
This is a catch-up episode. Yeah, just we're, enjoy. We're just hanging out. It's Friday morning. We're, we're we going to talk about sneakers a little bit, but yeah. we're going to talk about vacation. We're going to talk about kebab. We're going to talk about yeah. jerseys. Definitely. Well, T, so do you have a moment that you can remember from your childhood where you were banging your parents for a certain sneaker? Uh, you know what? So I know I've talked about getting the Stevie Williams DC shoes mm-hmm. like a bunch yeah. of times. Uh, that's one thing. So this one kind of isn't a sneaker, but it's sneaker related. Mm-hmm. The Again, one th- we're sneaker related. This the one. one thing I always wanted as a kid. So I grew up playing ice hockey, yeah. living in New Hampshire because ice hockey's super. It's like everything up there. Mm-hmm. So I always wanted a pair of CCM Tack ice skates, but they at the time. They did ones, this is like the 1995 or whatever. Mm-hmm. They did the ones that had a Reebok pump on the side. Sick. Um, and like they were, yeah, and they were like the the peak of like, if you had those skates with the Reebok pump on them. You were very good at hockey. You were, no, but you were like. I remember. It's just a status symbol, you yeah. know, because they were super expensive. Mm-hmm. I want to say I, they were probably like $250. And like with all the hockey gear, you got to get a helmet. A, mm-hmm. a stick, a pads, all that sort of stuff. It just adds up super quick. So your parents aren't going to want to buy you like the most expensive piece of like all of the, all of the equipment. Ooh, CCM tax. Sorry, I'm looking them yeah. up right now. Where they have the they're black the side, with the right? white stripe on yeah. the side. Yeah, yeah. And we went to um, in good looking, ice, good looking, yeah, ice hockey. Yeah, boot. there was a. I don't know if you guys had it. There was a. There was a chain in New England called Played Again Sports. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah you I could heard about used, that. Used stuff. Used stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're still around anymore, but you used we to go it. there. They would sell a bunch of used sporting gear. Sure. And we went into the local, I think, played against sports, and they had my size in those for like $99, which was like, I guess, still expensive for a yeah. pair of ice skates back then. Especially but, a used pair. But, but, Relatively speaking, you know, yeah. to like the 250 or whatever. The, and you had been asking your parents for that? I've been wanting these yeah. ice skates forever. And my dad was like, you know what? If they fit you, the $100, yeah. we can do it. Yeah. And I got the skates with the pump on the side. Nice. Amazing. I know it's not a pair of sneakers, but it's a pair hey, of okay. pumps. Close counts? enough for me. It's yeah. footwear. Did yeah. you feel like they made you better at hockey? I felt like I was like the man. You Did know? you ever get into hockey fights? Uh, no, but I got quite a few penalties at one point. Why? Sla- I, I could eat a serial <laughs> slasher, I'm sure. <laughs> Were you doing the knuckle puck? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Was that allowed? No. Were you allowed to do the knuckle puck? No. Did you ever recreate the Bash Brothers with one of your friends? Uh, I mean, we used to do that stuff in the basement all the time. Definitely. Yeah. The yeah. Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Um, You know what? I don't know that there was a specific shoe that I remember asking my mom for when I was growing up. I feel like I just knew better. And that's been the case with sneakers for a lot of times in my life where it's like i don't want to even bring up the subject of how much the things i really want cost because i know it's not going to be a thing Uh so there was never a time that i can remember where i was like really begging for a certain pair like by the time i really got into sneakers too i was like working a little bit so had my own money a little bit and you weren't like 10 years old trying to get a pair of air jordans or something no no i just i just didn't have that experience so there there was there was not a lot of that, you know. Like if I had like an old navy sweater, like that was a big deal, you yeah. know. So I knew yeah. that. <laughs> and yeah, my parents shoe. never wanted to like splurt. Like when actual came to actual sneakers during that whole yeah. like formative like yeah, early yeah, yeah. '90s era, it was just like going to famous footwear and pay getting less. a pair we of pay less take a down Nikes, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I bar- yeah barely any Nikes growing up, if so, if any. So uh, I I don't have any specific memories. I hope I hope I've not let you people down. But I know one person we didn't let down, and that's Matthew Ward because Matthew is getting these oh, Buck man. SB Dunks and. Uh, it's what a great pair! eBay authenticity guarantee. So I, I hope somehow that this 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 person in in Wilmington, Delaware, is a Ducks fan and can maybe appreciate that aspect of these. Nice looking shoe. Go Ducks! They won. They won one big this weekend, or they won. Yeah, not big. Kind of a but close they won. game. Yeah. Oh, Joe, not to another one last cleat thing before we go on. I'm sure you remember this back in the day. The one soccer cleat that Diodora. I, no, that I I had. A, I think I had a pair of Diodora indoor soccer shoes, but the one that I always wanted was the. The Adidas Copa Mundials. I had those all. I had like they were so expensive. They were like they were yep. made of like the kangaroo leather, the yep. black with just the white stripes, and they had like the the big fold down yeah. tongue on it. Classic iconic cleat. Yeah, it was like yeah the go to one. But you know what? I switched after the Copas. Kelm. Do you remember Kelm? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kelm. And you guys yeah, are going Kelme. deep right now. Kelme. Yeah. yeah. And Kelme. Then, <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember? Okay. George Weah, Diodora ads. Yeah. 
That's his name. Wait, that whoa, was his whoa, name. Whoa, his whoa. son, his son so plays with the U.S. Right national team. Wow. Timothy Wea. Um, Diodora had the Italian flag on it. Which and, was big for you. Yep. And I never had them, though. But he had red pair, a blue pair, and I always thought about getting them from East Bay. He was like front and center yeah. in the East Bay ads. And it's funny because I Googled them and I didn't see any come up. Really? Yeah. Hopefully we could find it. But Diodora with the Italian flag always. But Copas, definitely. Kelm or Kelme. Did you have Predators? No. Adidas Predators? Yeah. Yeah. And then... No, that's it. <laughs> I, I love that we're bringing up some of these other brands that we don't talk about too frequently on this podcast. because, And I think that's one of the things we wanted to talk about today was just how much... You know, we were discussing Solomon earlier, but kind yeah. of all these other Dude, interesting brands that are doing stuff in the space that, that we that like through, skip over a lot. Like, yeah. like you're saying, though, I remember that through like playing soccer growing mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. like especially indoor soccer, because there was all these... Like there was all those brands. Like you'd have like Lotto, yep, Diadora, Lanzaro, Lanzaro. Yeah, you would go to the. Got to be Italian, right? Yeah, you'd go to the store and like back then it wasn't like I feel like nowadays it's like the kids where it's like oh it has to be either like Nike or Adidas. But Adidas I remember Predator going to the old school like soccer sporting goods store and seeing all these like different sneaker brands. Way more varied. Yeah, but it was almost like back then if you had like. They weren't even considered off brands, but if you had this the like different. this kind of like you know super not obscure but kind of like unique uh, Italian mm -hmm. you know brand for your indoor soccer shoes or your cleats, it was almost like a badge of like oh I know a little bit more about this more stuff. special than getting the standard Nike thing that was yeah. on the shelf. Yeah. Sambas were, was Sambas your indoor? Uh, I don't. I think I had them, but. I think by that time we were getting. I had a pair of blue suede Diodoras that oh, were. That's a, that's good. Yeah. Diodora, oh, man, so good, so yeah. good. The colorway is yeah. so good. Joe, do you see yourself recently? You know, getting into more of the sneaker brand. I mean, you have the Solomons now. You're on board with Solomon. Are you interested in Hoka and On and things like this at all? So what I would say is that you know I mentioned that I was in South Carolina this mm -hmm. weekend. Hoka and On were. All over. Yeah. All over. The airport, when I landed, when we went out to dinner or lunch, all over. And I just remember, it was funny because when we were thinking about a topic, I was like, maybe it's like how this weekend and in general, I just see so many other brands. Hoka especially. Hoka you see in New York City a lot yeah. running. But to be there, South Carolina, and seeing on, like, it, it was like seeing... It was like seeing like the dirty Air Force Ones in the, in the in New York City. That's how many I saw. You know, <laughs> I, I I did see a pair of dirty Air Force Ones at the airport and almost took that IG story video, but I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> but but as someone's like for a fitness, you know, on is on a very fitness centric shoe, and and maybe do you have any insight? I've heard they're trash. Really? Oh. Yes. Really. So yeah. I, I I've had trouble getting on board with them, but I agree with Joe. Like I see them a ton. Their IPO just did super yeah. well. Roger Federer is involved, but yeah, I had just like seen a lot of like really techy, nerdy, uh, you know, performance running reviews yeah. on on, and I just never saw like really favorable reviews of people weren't the, impressed. Have you worn them at all? Because I have a couple I have, pairs, I haven't, but worn I haven't worn them, them. so maybe yeah. I'm not like the one to go. But the people who were wearing them, who I you know, kind of very serious yeah. runners. So I'm, I'm excited to see what happens when brands like that start making more shoes geared toward people like us or more toward collectors and sneaker heady type stuff. Because I, I think brands like Hoka, like On, like Solomon are, are doing a lot of cool stuff, but a lot of it is still super performance oriented. Maybe maybe Solomon to a lesser extent and, and Hoka has some cool collabs that are in the mix and you know I wear the engineer garment ones all the time. But like I'm interested to see in the next couple of years what that type of stuff looks well, like when they start figuring out those. Well, I think one of the cool things about Solomon is that it feels like a lot of their shoes, you know, are like the models themselves are very performance yeah. heavy. But I feel like that's a bit of the appeal to it. It's almost like why people used to gravitate towards like old like North Face jackets because yeah. they look just super technical, yeah, yeah. but also like actually really cool yeah. at, at the same point. So you can just, I think they're Solomon's winning because they're putting, they're doing really good color. I feel like the, the models look good, yeah. yeah, but they're doing really good colorways on it. You yeah, know, there's some definitely. good ones. Yeah. Another interesting note on on actually, I was. Again, I'm going to bring it back no. to my Portland trip a bunch of times, but I met with Jimo Wong oh, nice. while, while I was out there, you know, formerly of Jordan Brand, and, and he said that all he ever wears these days is on. He showed up in on sneakers when I was chatting with him. Yeah, And also on the Hoka tip, 
I was told that Hoka has a design lab in Portland now. So, you know, these brands are are, are doing a lot to kind of get in that space. Yeah. We should, I mean, maybe we should do something. Did we do anything big on them yet? or On Hoka? Yeah. Not really. I have an interview with the... I have an interview with the founder, co-founder, this French guy. He's quite an interesting character that we got to roll out there one of these days. But yeah. yeah, I bought. Yeah, I think I mentioned I bought my mom Hoka's for Christmas, and it's like her favorite shoe. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I mean, the Hoka is cool too because it's such a recognizable shoe with those yeah. chunky soles. Yeah. You and know. Her, and her best friend saw that she would like they would go walking together, or whatever, and yeah. she, they saw that she had the hokas and my mom was like you know these are the best shoes ever and her mom i mean her friend went and bought the hokas as well so it's like one of those things where i think yeah. like it just catches on yeah but do, I, I feel like we have this problem as sneaker people where we are slower to look at those brands like we get stuck in just nike adidas reebok new balance puma and, and these smaller brands that are coming up i feel like non-sneaker people get on them a lot quicker than we do even though oh we're, yeah we're you like, like living you're gonna get judged like yeah. if you wear them i don't I, know i i mean for me i think i'm just like a creature of habit like it's less about like expanding into new brands more than like i wear the same five yeah. sneakers yeah. but yeah. i do think that once you like see them and 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 you see them all over the place it's intriguing like it's intriguing yeah. to try to to try them and see for yourself. And I think with like Hoka. Do you have Hoka's yet? I don't. We gotta don't. get you on the Hoka train too. Are they oh. good for like treadmill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, they're great for running. Yeah, okay, for running. Okay. I'm, I'm pro Hoka, mm -hmm. but I have a, I know a lot of people like Hoka for like lifestyle purposes. Yeah. But I'm, you can't do that. I'm still strictly like, I like Hoka because I think they make great running shoes. But I don't, I don't see yet wearing the shoe with like the super thick sole. You don't think they look good on me? Yeah. Wow. Put that video. No, no put, answer. put the video oh. in. No, put the video. Put video? the video in. Uh, what, you were walking. You no, he's did the, Solomon. That, that he's was Solomon. Solomon. Yeah, Solomon was my one. Doesn't, uh, when doesn't, I, was I mean, I don't know if we can put out. Doesn't Bodega have a a Solomon collaboration? No, uh, Hoka. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, well, it's out those there actually now. look pretty good. Those okay. look. Those might win you over. Those look pretty good. It was funny when I, I, you know, like I said, I wore Solomon's this whole time I was gone out of New York, and somebody I was talking to, they're like, "Do you even wear Nike?" Like they thought that I, you know, I'm like, "Do people really think you wear a lot of Nike?" I tons, know. Thank you. Tons. You know, people think I either only wear Reebok or don't wear certain. No. You know, it's it's like the a Reebok thing is kind of not. You wear a lot of Reebok, but it wasn't as heavy as it was like peak. What, yeah, and I'm trying to year, yeah, year and a half. I'm ago, trying to like years? work away from it in a way. You know, I still love the brand, but I feel like I get pigeonholed. People see me yeah. on the street, they're like, "Why?" I've said this before. No, yeah, you're not wearing Reebok. Same thing was right when I didn't wear Adidas. People are like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, like, people got yeah. mad at me at Complex Con because I wore a pair of Nike. Well, someone commented on the Eli episode. Damn, Joe, you're getting lazy repeating sneakers, and I was wearing the Cause Fours. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> not good enough for you. Speaking about Complex Con. Okay. Yeah. We will be there. Yes. We will be recording a live podcast. Oh, and it's a good one. It's a really, really good one. That's a good one. Uh, done. Yeah. yeah. Props. That was hey, a really man, good. It's one. always a team effort. Let's just hope. Actually, let's hope that we're not jinxing it by mentioning it here, and we're not right, going to say who the guest right, is at all. Right. But we do have a good, a great guest, a legendary guest lineup yes. for ComplexCon, and we hope that pans out. Definitely. And if you were there, come say hi to us. And, uh, Don't we, shake our hand, though. Yeah, we will we'll, we'll give you an elbow bump, maybe. <laughs> we will be recording live Sunday, 4 p.m., November 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, location to come, but Long Beach, obviously, the convention center. We will be there. Have we thought about the rotation? I, th I will say this. As someone who just said I, like, stick to the same five sneakers, yeah. I think Complex Con, through the years, I tended to go a little... You might bring the Solomons out for Complex Con, yeah, Joe? we have to see. Like, I... I what did I... <sighs> I forget what I wore, but like uh, Marco, our friend Marco was really good at hooking hooking up um, okay. some special footwear for that. I don't I know. Could, I I'm... could definitely picture like you had mentioned before. The, there we go. The, no, I'm saying like the high, the high socks, the you know the kind of like uh, technical sort of yep. shorts, but and a like yep, yep, yep. Or, or not even a hoodie. I don't know if you do like if you do like a fleece. Don't you have fleece? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he's planning out <laughs> not only but I'm your saying, rotation, that's, that's, but that's your like, That's like the Solomon right. fit. If you're ever going to wear... Was it on full size when someone got mad at me once for saying Felice? Yeah, um, Spencer Dinwiddie. Yeah, I said Felice. <laughs> 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 I've always said Felice. I don't, I don't care. Felice Navidad. Um, Works for me. Yeah, so do you guys have any idea what you're going to wear? 
No, I haven't started. Uh, I haven't started thinking about it. I'm still stuck in a different. Are you gonna I'm be, are you gonna be like a two sneaker guy or like one sneaker guy for complex? Con? You know what places like yeah, that good where question. you naturally How many you like bring in? buy a bunch of shoes? I do like to only bring one pair of shoes because it's just the anticipation that I will accrue shoes over the weekend. Ugh. Oh. You gonna have a Clark Kent type of? Uh, no, I can't. Well, I can't there's definitely. Go I'm sure you've like had Clark. moments in the past, and this is obviously like first world problem sort of situation where you've like gone on like a press trip and mm -hmm. like you overpacked, and right. then like they want to give you stuff, and you're just like, where am I gonna put this? Yeah. To that point, I will say, this weekend in South Carolina, I packed like a really loud fit, and it felt great. Yeah. You ever loud do that? Fit? Yes. Well, what was like, what was the fit? Okay, the fit was, this Kith light jacket that's like orange blue red i've wore it before wait how much for the jacket i don't i don't oh, oh doing you're doing the fit <laughs> jacket talk to me nice right yeah. so um a very loud kith uh, 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 i have a picture kith jacket and i wore the michigan off-white dunks with the crazy laces like yeah. and it felt good to like wear you know everyone's in hoka and on and yeah and i was like this guy stepping is stepping out yeah like, this guy's standing out guy. for yeah either good or bad reasons but it was a very very loud fit i haven't wore a loud fit in a while but felt sometimes it feels good when you're out of state to just you know speaking of good or bad and virgil can we mention real quick this oh, leak, the, air, the, the, leak of the air force one mid i like giving virgil his credit and we always have to be patient and the see the final photos but that shoe looks terrible do you know what shoe also looks terrible tell me with all due respect to virgil don't say the two no those bl those blazer lows yeah, I'm not a fan of that one either. It has like the Humara looking like heel on it. Yeah, let's maybe again. it'll grow on you guys. Yes, the Jordan I, Two. You know what? It's one of those things that, regardless of if it growing on you or not, I just a a blazer low is just not a shoe that. Are I'm you a blazer guy at all? I feel no, like I've I never like seen you in any so blazers. I thought about that I'm the a blazer other day. Guy. I have I'm some not a blazer that I love. guy. I think blazer may be like my least favorite silhouette. Just for me, I can't really wear. I don't think I own. Any blazers. You I know what else blazers I am? Were so the Zoo York one I owned from Bla Finish Line days. Blazers were so big, like in two thousand and like eight. Yeah, I was working at Foot Locker. We just like there was like the GR ones, just like just white with like a purple check or whatever. There was like these gray ones that had like a you splatter a print on it, dude. Yeah. Like blue out of them. There's some Nike SB blazers that are very dear to my heart. You know what other blazers are dear to my heart? What the Portland, Portland Trail blazers? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Funny story. Wait, you sung the national anthem, didn't you? <laughs> I, I, they joke. didn't. They didn't pass me the mic, but I was, that, at, the, I was at, the, at the Blazers. Laughing opener. out loud. Yeah. F funny story about the duck thing. Um, I, I was going to mention to this. We're talking about the Blazers. To, yeah, but off. I was going to mention this off camera, but it's a funny thing to mention on camera. Uh oh. Um, no, no, no. Because you were at the game. And Which good, game? You were at the Oregon game, right? Or did you not? This go past to, weekend? No. Yeah. Blazers. No, no, no. The Oregon game was at UCLA. Oh, okay. Did yeah. You, you oh, so I got it all mixed up because I saw the. I mean, anyway, I saw a picture online from okay. our good friend Ian Carmel. Yes. And he was at the. Oregon. Yeah, we were texting. Yeah. He yeah, was he was at, at the, the Oregon game, so I got it mixed because I thought that you were uh, there no, no, or whatever. No, no, no. So and I and I sent him a DM and I go, "Did you get to tickle Brendan Dunn?" And his answer was only spiritually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. I, I was in you, Oregon and the game was in LA, so I didn't make it. But I was at the Blazers opener. Let me, I was, let me uh, ask, there. what kind of fan are you at the games? Are you going like this? <laughs> are you going like this when Dame hits a a, a corner three? I was getting into it. I was there okay. with Dima, who I mentioned earlier. Yeah, we, you know, we were. Uh, I think we were guests of Anthony Simon, so we were cheering for him specifically and, and trying to really um, celebrate his his game that night. And you had he, the little Jersey Youth XL, the <laughs> 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 Lillard, <laughs> like me. Oh uh, no, it was a it was a good time there at the Blazers game. So you know, you know. Just enjoying, just enjoying everything Oregon has to offer. I killed my rental car. I, I had to jump the rental car. Wait, how did that happen? Oh, man. Um, most rental cars I get these days, the lights turn off automatically. You know, most most cars these days, when you get out of it, the, the headlights will turn off automatically. Okay. But this is like a 2013 Ford C-Max hybrid, and you still have to turn the dial to get the lights off. And I just didn't turn the dial. So the next morning I woke up and... You didn't want to like like uh, you have a rental car. You wanted to rent something like diesel for the weekend or something. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You like with Frank Cooker in the <laughs> what the Benz and Steven just Porsche. You come in. <laughs> <laughs> little, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy from the Simpsons. Yeah, you, you think yes. my car is too small? Just the Flintstones. <laughs> 
Oh, um, uh, yeah, we had to call AAA. I've never, oh, do you man. guys know how to jump? I feel like Wealthy definitely knows how to jump a car. Uh, I've definitely jumped a car before. I don't know how to jump a car. So I was looking it up on YouTube, couldn't figure it out. AAA people figured it out Shots for us. AAA, so they always help. We do appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, I do want to talk. I don't know if it's gonna it's gonna be a big thing, but whatever it is, it can't be bigger than me jumping my no. But the, you did a great great story on the CDG foam posits. Oh, thank you. And you want those, a pair? I, I want the black pair. I think you feel it, remi it reminds me of you were big on the black suede yes, foam posits back in the day. Yes, really. Yep. You, and you uh, bought them? Time life building up, and I wore them a lot. Really? I wore them a lot. What yes. about just like the How regular triple they black? On your feet, Joe? Not not that comfortable, but I also have the Supreme foams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the black and gold ones. You wore them? I think I sold I my have, pair. I've worn them. More uncomfortable shoe, Joe. Okay. Black Supreme suede foams or black Hender Scheme Air Jordan 4s? Wait, so the Supreme <laughs> foams weren't suede? Yeah. No, no, it's not su oh, yeah. Supreme. Yeah. Black suede foam posits. Okay. Oh, yeah. Or black Hender Scheme Air Jordan 4s, which... For all those who don't know, I've there are very few shoes that I've seen Joe LaPuma so anticipated for and then being so disappointed. Really? When you were let down? Yes. He was like, I just building up to that, you were very excited for that shoe, very right? Very excited. I got the tan pair. Uh -huh. Very uncomfortable. Also was sliding around the sneaker shopping set like it was an ice skating Yeah, because they had the, their hard <laughs> like, bodies. Hey, their you hard had bodies. The, uh, yeah. okay. the, the, the tax on, right? Yes, the okay. tax on. And then, silly enough, I got the black ones because Black Cat 4s are yeah. one of my favorite sneakers. Signature shoe. Made the same mistake twice. Obviously, a really cool-looking shoe, but yeah. pretty uncomfortable for me. And also... But they got a nice bit of padding on the inside, but I, I had the... The sole, though? You had the New the Balance sole, ones. Yeah, I had the New Balance ones, and I remember it was one of those shoes that really tore into my heel the first time I wore them, you know, just had the running the skin crew raw. Sock. Yeah. yeah. Put but some Band-Aids on there. I think also they look like when you wear them, they, like, don't they even, like, change colors if they... Yeah, it was that era of the raw leather and letting your shoes patina. But it's very tough to wear an uncomfortable shoe that much. Yeah. And I don't like the la the leather laces. Yeah, that, that was a fun moment, though, the Hender scheme. We ever, so. Would we ever maybe see you break those out at any point, Joe? Do you still have them? I have them somewhere. I got close to buying them. That's still, I think, the most I've ever spent for a shoe was Hender scheme, New Balances, you know, like... Definitely you, you, a moment. Yeah, you you could buy them if you bought them directly from Japan. You, you could got them get from them Rakuten for ten or whatever. Yeah, significantly cheaper. But if you went to like <laughs> End Clothing, they were a thousand dollars straight up, and and there were a lot on sale. I remember going to a opening ceremony sample sale a few years after those really popped, and there were there were a number of Hender Scheme sneakers there for for quite good prices. You know, it was a different type of flex. I think Noah had Hender Scheme sandals. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, just wore them. I was like, okay, well, yeah, that's a that's a different kind of life. Yeah, uh, definitely. What about Union Jordan Twos? Saw the I saw the sketches today. Oh, I didn't. I, there's a mock-up floating around. Yeah. Is that next year though? Yeah. It's very tough for me to be like, oh, next it's year. Like a white, it's like a white. I don't know if that's even the real color. High rates put together. Yeah, a it's like a white shop. pink. Let me ask you guys I something. I don't have any feelings. I, it's the mock-ups. I just, again, I really do believe in waiting and in yeah. not necessarily giving people the benefit of the doubt, but like waiting till we see a yeah. good non-potato shot of the shoe and like. I think it. Our a friend of the program, Poe, yeah. had put that if it's what he had seen the shoe was, it will be go down as one of Union's best Air or best sneaker collaborations of all time. Really? Which is like lofty praise for yeah. it. Don't know mm. what that means, but all right. I'm all in on the Hope it happens. On the Jordan Two Renaissance. The black uh the black Virgil. Yeah. Yeah. I, you don't like it? I like the white the white, one? the white ones. The I know people Classic have mentioned it. Word. The black ones kind of look like a GR. A little bit, little, yeah. Almost or like, grade school. Remember that Radio Raheem Jordan yeah. too? It looks a little bit like that. Yeah. Let me ask you: If you had an off white, would you, and like you were like meeting Virgil for yeah. like a lunch or coffee, would you, you think that's going to happen? No, I'm. He's yeah, never. Oh, have him sign it. He's never answered my DMs. How did I get to lunch huh. or coffee? I'm just saying hypothetically. Would you have him? Can sign you him? set this up? Yeah. Would you? Maybe. I don't it's know, not actually. a hypothetical well, anymore. Let's do it. No, I don't what, know. Would, what would you have him write on the side? Yeah. Would I don't know. You, would I you mean, go air would you ask him to sign like one? Yeah, of your, sure, sure. I think sure. it's. Yeah, I, I like still think it's cool. He had. It's because he signed yours, right? He did the the air JLPs. Yeah, Chicago was, Jordan ones. Yeah. So you can't sell them now. No, that's okay. <laughs> I wore them to my high school when I went back. Mm. Yeah, and I wore them for the Michael B Jordan, not to be oh, confused yeah. with mm -hmm. Michael Jordan mm -hmm, episode. Mm -hmm. But and you had the most one of the most legendary moments on your show. You not wearing. 
Chicago Air Jordan 1s, but one of the most legendary Chicago Air Jordan 1 signed Virgil moments on sneaker shopping ever. Tell me. Bella Hadid. Oh. She creased them. <laughs> and people the inter- that one picture yeah. just like went well, all around it, the internet oh, hit, it, yeah. hit in New York every every uh, <laughs> every six months, months yeah, that yeah, pops yeah. up yeah the people go crazy well, over yeah. were there any other big moments from that episode um <laughs> <laughs> sorry I heard. I heard. sorry I'm sorry oh well I want to I want to go briefly left for a second Air Jordan 1 collabs. I want to thank everybody who tagged me in the photo of the guy doing the shoey out of the Balvin Jordan 1s from the F1 oh, Grand yeah. Prix over the weekend. I want to thank everybody for respecting me as an increasingly prominent figure in the F1 fan, you know, uh, consortium worldwide. Uh, if you, if you, would you do a shoey? What's the reason? Like, what? I mean, like if there's like I guess if there's something to really celebrate, but it you just like doesn't feel like followers on Instagram culture. or something like that. <laughs> this is after I meet Virgil, hypothetically. Constructors should note that my fandom is still totally available in F1, but I'm kind of leaning toward McLaren. Um, Joe, anyway, we can do another F1 driver on sneaker shopping. Well, I've been I've been trying pulling for Daniel Ricardo. Uh, I am. Let's um put it out there. Okay, we're pitching him. We hope that yes. he will do it. Daniel also, Ricardo? they're in the states for the next. Yeah, I don't want to commit because. Um, Okay. It's gonna be tough, but okay. for, but we are trying to get him on the show. Yeah. And you've yeah. been you've been yeah, a nice one, mate. Huh? Nice one, mate. Oh right, exactly. Yeah. Australian. <laughs> Australian. Yeah, yes. yeah. Australian uh, Italian. Yes. Oh let's go. Count it. Yeah, if it's an Italian thing, I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, maybe <laughs> wait, you were he's came to one episode though. I've I've come to a couple, right? I was there when you guys shot PJ Tucker at Flight Club. Yes. And then, oh, maybe the other one was my own episode. Um, I was trying that to remember. <laughs> I was trying to remember because I feel like I've been in Stadium Goods when you when y'all were shooting another one. There was a recent one where I almost pulled up. I, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, you were there for PJ Tucker. I That's feel right. like in the past few seconds you just went like full Goku, like running your hands yeah, through the hair. It's, it's just it's, like all of a sudden it's. He's like, still <laughs> thinking about the JetBlue uh, fuckery <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to make my hair match my mood again. I'm I'm quite tired. I I wasn't there was yeah. It it's been it's been a rough you know, 24 hours. And I've been traveling a lot. I was at the Eames Reebok event week week before that out in L.A. Damn, and what a hard life. No, I'm not saying it's. I'm just saying I've been. You were traveling. It's, it's listen, hard to keep the energy up. As soon as as soon as we're ahead on this podcast or FSR, this guy is on the next jet out of Teterboro. Yeah, that's true. And let me tell you one thing about the LA situation, because Joe, I know you can relate to this. It is so rough when you sit down for a meal in LA and you feel like you picked a good spot. You got a nice, oh, I know you got a nice coming. deli sandwich I know in front it's of coming. you. The real judgment. You got yes. an authentic set of tacos you're about to jump into. Yep. And? and you tell Justin Bolas. The oh, he says it's trash. First We Feast employee Justin Bolas, a dear friend of mine, a friend of the program, a colleague to all of us, somebody you've played Mario Kart with an yes. uncountable number of times, you know, a, a valley you. boy, an L.A. native, and a big-time food guy will always come with the harshest judgments on whatever you ate in L.A. That's trash. That's he, overrated. He will question your friendship if you eat at the wrong spot. And it's always the wrong spot. Yep, Always. And He's, he always tells me the same spots to go to, too. I, I, come on, man. And you come in with the energy like, oh, man, you know, I've been going to this place for years. And he will just shut it down. S- shut it down. S- and and just the harshest, harshest Disappointment. Critic. Yeah. It's just disappointment. Yeah. Exactly. He, yeah. It's not what you expect from a friend. But you know what? Maybe we can uh, go to the right places to eat with him when we're... In L.A. in yes. a couple it, weeks for ComplexCon. It yes. takes a little bit of effort out there as well because the food choices around ComplexCon. P.F. Chang's. You go to P.F. Chang's? <laughs> There's a CPK right across the street. <laughs> Are you going to... Anyways. Uh, California oh. Pizza Kitchen and... Yep. and um. Oh, where we had the infamous uh, full-size run pre-production meeting where Brennan was sitting back to back with Ben, ben Baller. Baller was right behind us. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. He was at the right. booth, but they, they couldn't like see each other. It was yeah. just like uh, was two ships thing. in the night. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> actually, we don't need to worry about the food situation at ComplexCon too much. And I'm not going full promo mode here. I'm actually excited about this, but they have the first We Feast Lagoon yes. Yes. where they have all those uh, good eateries. Or I don't know. Chris Schoenberger has deemed them good. I don't know if Justin Bolas has personally signed yeah, off they, on every one did of them. Did it pass the Bolas test? <laughs> yeah. oh, I, was, I, was, I was so mad I didn't get a chance to, because the line was long, I didn't get a chance to do the um, 
the the hot ones or the no the first we feast like the portillo burger that they did yeah did yeah it. that it was, was in chicago right yeah, yeah so good yeah and Are then we... in last long beach one i i did the uh they had like an italian hero sandwich and nobody yeah. told no, me there was, was an italian no, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. chicago yeah. Yeah. yeah um i did i I think I did multiple a day, actually. <laughs> they had the Italian hero. It was great. I love this. This is so humble. We're waiting in lines at Complex Con, Wealthy? Yeah. Okay. Brendan, did you do the Murakami burger at Complex Con? No. Um, not for me. I've been to Bars in Garo, I think it's called, his his cafe in Tokyo. But I I don't need a burger with the flower printed on it. You know? One shoe that's coming to Complex Con. Can we confirm? I have one, I think. A release or oh oh you mean that something you're packing with you? Yeah. What is it? What? Busy P Air Force One. Yeah, you're gonna break out the heat. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Can we? Can you guys contribute? Should, what? Bringing up bringing something really special. Confirm right now. Put it out in the air. <sighs> this is tough, man. Because you gotta like think you know, on it. No, because the whole thing too, and I'm sure you obviously agree with this is like. Complex cons, like you want to do the sneakers, but you also have to calculate the fit. Mm -hmm. Well, he's been doing a lot of fit calculating today. <laughs> well, it's yours it, or just the Zach Bag gift. <laughs> doesn't yeah. doesn't doesn't the fit always have to come in, especially at Complex Con? Because if you come if you come lacking with the fit at Complex Con, yeah, I know. Then what? I feel like there's. You think people are gonna put you on blast? Nobody. I don't think. Are people really talking about our fits like that? I want to just keep it humble. I mean, here. when you're gonna take photos with like three thousand people, you want to make sure the fits on point. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Hmm. I just or if you you know you're gonna get a chance to run into your other super cool friends. Are you making fun of me? No, I'm oh, being okay. honest. Because you're at <laughs> okay. Complex Con. I, I thought this was a reference to me like name no. dropping everybody in the industry over the no, past. No, I mean like you get minutes. you get to run in. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. To Hang your other super cool friends, and yeah. obviously you're gonna take photos together, so you don't want to. He's already counting how you, many photos. You don't want to, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah. What? It happens. I'm not. I'm not even trying to say it as a flex. It just happens. I, I mean, how many photos do you take? Joe Lapuma actually. Sometimes I've seen like, because like so bodyguards I, I, pushing people no, out no, of the no, way. Well, like we're I done feel like here. <laughs> sometimes like we've been like you know you get caught in the fray. Yeah. I remember one time we were talking to Bobby Hundreds I and it was just like kids left or right were just grabbing Joe Lapuma. They were grabbing you? No, just. It's it was either it's time for photos or it's not time for photos. So you just beeline it sometimes. That's not true. This <laughs> is seen, false. I've seen you beeline it. You're like, nope. With I'm, the shades on, right? No yes. way. Inside That's the convention not true. Center yes. With the dark shades on. Like, That's I not true. You've seen it, right? Like, no way. Tunnel vision. Uh, to, to turn down a photo? No, not turn down a photo. Oh, but if you, I had to be somewhere? No, I'm saying you walk at a pace where it's like, oh, it I doesn't present. Oh, it, so you know what he's going to wear? The no photos Jordan one. <laughs> oh my god! I have never. I think that's a lie. No, Dave Matthews. On, don't let him you get walk away at with a, that. You walk at a clip. I walk fast, yeah, but he's on his way to Portillo's. Exactly. The <laughs> got to beat the line. Yep. I'm looking forward to. I hope. Got to pop out to the first. I hope piece um, we see you guys at Complex Con. It should be fun. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. Live podcast episode. Live podcast. Great guest. The big guest. Uh, ASAP Rocky. Performing. Uh, Tenth year anniversary. Yep. Love Concert, uh, yep. Yachty's doing a DJ set. Mm -hmm. is, is anything going to be able to top the Kid Cudi live performance for you, Joe? I mean, that was a great live performance. What do you mean? And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, sure. like, to, like, when, I feel like Were you there? Wait, is yeah. that the one where your awesome. friend tried to sneak yes. in? Who, yes. What? Oh, we'll talk about it after. <laughs> we were right next to it. It was me and Dre, Croatian star. Oh, I yeah. thought you yeah. right said we were going to talk about it after, and then you mentioned his name right Well, we don't away. have to say what happened. Um, okay, okay. Didn't he go backstage? <laughs> Wait, I remember this. We don't, we don't have to talk about it. I remember this. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it. Anyways. I'm glad we got here. <laughs> but Cuddy came out with like the Cuddy Bape full size figures and like it's when he was doing Pursuit of Happiness, there was like like confetti flying. It was awesome. It was awesome. I got to be honest. And I maybe... remember being next to Christian, the, the Christian. Yeah. And Resident I was like, complex. totally enjoying it. And then Euphoric I was like, moment for you. Yeah. And I was like, I think I was like, this is. Look this at what, it. I th yeah, it's something like we super built this. Super, <laughs> super, look around. Super yeah. sentimental. Like, look at the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I got to be honest, and maybe this makes me sound like a bad employee or attendee. <laughs> okay. But I really never go to the musical performances at Complex. It's Con. tough sometimes. I don't have the energy. So, you're just so I'm, tired. I'm taking at the so many photos with fans. So what I also want to say is, there's no sneaker of the year panel this year. Just putting that out there. There's okay. no sneaker of the year panel this so year. So we're trying to sell tickets. I know, Come on, I know. man. <laughs> um, you know, we'll hopefully be back next next year. But what I would say is, like, I was grabbing naps, like, yeah. 
at 20 minute spurts and I get by the concert you are so yeah. so tired the, the one thing you did you got to go to Brendan a few years ago that I didn't get to go to because I think I was stuck working on something till the late hours was that uh that there was like a sneakers and stuff party at like a palatial estate that's right in Long Beach that's right yeah. at, at a house in the hills that's right. it was like a mansion or something like yeah. that I was thinking of a different sneakers and stuff party in Paris because yeah. they know how to throw a party but yes that was a good time and Khalees performed. It was an Adidas. Oh, it was one. it was an Adidas sneakers and stuff event, I believe. I can't remember if Adidas. I think was it was super affiliated or not. But yeah, that was that was a fun time. And you know what? That same night, here I'm tying it all back in. Check this out. That same night, what was I doing? I was watching live at the Coliseum an Oregon Ducks game against what USC. You? Super a blowout. Fan. Oh yeah. So I wasn't there this past weekend, but I was there that weekend, and I will be there if we make the college football playoff. Are you going to go to? The ASAP Rocky performance. Can we get that commitment? Yeah, sure. I'll be there. You're yeah. gonna break out some vintage HBA, ASAP Gorgonzola. I have one. <laughs> Shout out to Alex. Shouts Shout out to Alex. Alex. Shouts to Bernie. And Bernie. Of oh, course. can you check to see if Bernie heard from Pete from Special Sauce? I will text Bernie right now. Appreciate it. Because uh, I hit Pete on Facebook Messenger, but who knows? If he's when, when you when you gotta hit him through Facebook I know, Messenger, you, it's, you never know. That's a, yeah, it's a shot you in the dark. Know. Well, I guess now it's time to go dark, although we will be back. We will be back next <laughs> week. Don't dark, say that dark. because <laughs> when we were on, we took a week off and we saw the tweets. So, yeah, literally, we'll we're about here. to go dark. You're going to get a text message from my Wait. mom at 7 o'clock in the Send morning. Send podcast. Saying, where's the podcast? I can't find it. We need a break every once in a while. That's true. Every once in a long while. We don't do it that often. Anyway, this has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, please subscribe. We will see you next week. Yep.